I'm Jamie O'Flanagan. Uh, I'm Hugo Fitzpatrick. My name is Owen Kidney. <laughs> Lee Cullen from Low Poly Games. My name is Christopher Conlon. My name is Ben Clevin. So, my name is Colm Larkin. And my name is Paul Conway. Uh, Alan Duggan is my name. I'm JP Vaughan, so I'm from Rocket Rainbow. So, I am Andrea. Uh, and I'm Andrew. GameSparks is a cloud-based platform for games developers to help build the server-side features of their games and then manage them as a service post-launch. Yeah, so GameSparks was founded in January 2012, uh, where they developed, they started the development of the platform, which officially launched in uh, August 2012 at Gamescom. I think a lot of uh, the Irish guys would have would have first heard of uh, GameSparks at Gamescom itself in Germany. Uh, since then, GameSparks has a, over a thousand subscribers and what GameSparks actually is, is a games as a service platform. It's free to use for any indie developers or, or any professional developers or anyone who's, who's making a game and needs a uh, back end for the game. They can build all their server side functionalities using our software, the likes of your leaderboards, your cross platform multiplayer, your in-app purchases, virtual goods, all that kind of stuff. It can all be done using, a, using our platform basically. And, like I said, we, we're trying to make it easy, as easily accessible for, for anyone who wants to make a game by making it free to use yeah. and, and, and just releasing it and putting it out there for, for people. Yeah, so I mean, that, that's, a, that's a brief rundown of, of what we do. Uh, in the last year, it's been a pretty big year. We've expanded pretty rapidly. Uh, we have an office here in Dublin. Uh, this, this is our meeting room for, the, for our offices. We're based out in Grand Canal Quay and a hub where, where the likes of Facebook, Google, LinkedIn, Twitter are all a stone's throw from our offices. So we're pretty much in the heart of the tech industry in, in Ireland or in Dublin. And some big moments for us this year was reaching the 1000 mark for, for customer subscribers to the platform. That was a big deal. We don't do much marketing yet because we're still new, but 2015 should be a big year. We're really gonna push it. Uh, we also uh, we got on the cover in November of Develop Magazine, so we're very proud of that. Uh, the months before was Cliff Blazinski and John Romero, uh, respectively, so we were happy to get on the cover of Develop. We also got the inside cover as well. So that was a big deal for us because we, we, we work a lot with the UK game industry as well as the Irish game industry, so it was a, it was a pretty big deal for us. So, so we've some like high profile people working with us. We work with uh, Square Enix, have signed on for us, with us for various different projects. Um, soon to be released is the new Sleeping Dogs PC title, which is uh, it's, it's similar to the, the, the console games that have been released before, but there's a lot of multiplayer to it where uh, it's kind of like Mafia Wars meets Sleeping Dogs, where you create your own clans and you create your own bases and you can attack other bases and things like that. So it's going to be, it's a pretty large scale game and Square Enix and UFG Games are, are, are building that and publishing that. So we're pretty excited about the launch of that. It should be early next year, hopefully. Um, other companies that use us, UFG, who made the Smash Bandits game, just released MMX Racing recently. Uh, it's been featured on Apple, it's been featured on Google, it has... Uh, launched the first weekend had six million downloads so they were using our software to manage all their server side needs so they were really excited about working with those guys and um, no, no downtime with six million downloads on games <laughs> no, no downtime that's right <laughs> provides developers with a single integrated tool to build these server components without ever having to set up and run a server There's technically seven of us now, because uh, we got a, 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 a new part-time tester there the other day, so it's getting big. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. That's kind of crazy. <laughs> um, so, how was 2014 for you? Oh, very crazy. Yeah, it was a tough one. Yeah. Um, it was cool in some ways, I mean, it was my first GDC yeah. this year, so that's awesome, because I always wanted to go. Um, in terms of the game... Um, God, I guess we, we got our publisher this year, 
So that was cool. But we also ran out of money like twice this year. So that wasn't cool. Um, what else happened? We released on early access. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I know yeah. that important bit at <laughs> the, a, nearly at the we, end. We put a bit of a game out. Yeah. 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 And the, the, the greatest of that thing is actually we got really good response from the community. Like people uh, playing a lot, saying stuff like... Uh, this is how early access should be done, you know, which is amazing because um, what they were kind of talking about was that we put something somewhat polished regarding like gameplay mm -hmm. and there was a few bugs and they were like, okay, this is early access, but the core of the game is there and we've been updating people since like uh, uh, we, we pushed one update and then we pushed more kind of like this is what's going on because we also asked the community, do you prefer a lot of little updates or one you know slightly less often but bigger and most people went like we prefer you know polished and bigger than you know so That's good. so all of that happened yeah gdc was amazing yeah was that your first time going or? yeah okay how did you experience like what did you think of it i don't know it was just great to to be there <clears throat> um and at the it's like we just met a lot of really cool people we actually hung out with a lot of Irish people as well there. Mm. Uh, I don't know, it, it's kind of like an experience rather than a conference. Yeah. So that's that's pretty cool. Yeah, I guess um, the reason I always wanted to go is to go to all the technical conferences and stuff like that. But Because um, there's some really, some really hardcore techie stuff going on there. Um, but those passes are too expensive. <laughs> so we didn't get to go to those. So we... Uh, we just got the, the indie passes, I think, or expo passes. No, yeah, indie, indie passes. Indie. Yeah. So um, next time, hopefully, get to go to all the techie stuff. <laughs> Nerd out completely. <laughs> um, yeah, it was cool. I mean, releasing anything at any point is really uh, it's really hard work. You know, regardless of the stage that the game is at. So you sort of you know when you put a game out on early access that um, it's going to have bugs because it's it's an alpha or a pre-alpha. So some level of bugs are acceptable, but you also have to make it sort of pretty polished at the same time. Um, you know, fix all the things you can, and that took took a lot of work. Yeah. So it was pretty hard. But um, I mean, you get all the benefits then after that. There's some there's some there's some pretty good feedback coming back from people, um, and it's nice to start sort of engaging with the community. And that sounds kind of wanky. Can I say wanky? Yeah. But. It's kind of true. I mean, it, it, something that, that happens is you might get one person asking you a question and if you respond to that person, then it's a nice sort of a conversational response. They sort of take it on themselves to, to be a spokesperson for you and answer other questions and that all rolls on and that's really cool. Uh, so that's been a, a nice experience. Yeah, also kind of verify that you're not completely insane because you could have just been going on for two years, right, you know, working on this game and it could just be like, what <laughs> you know? Uh, so so far, some people seem to think that we're not totally crazy. It's just nice, you know. No, not only a good few thousand people, thousands of people spotted, but yeah. also, you know, they are actually saying, "Hey, we really like this." Yeah. And we think this is going to be an awesome game when it's finished. Yeah. It it it. Um. I don't know if you saw the tweets of the pictures, but it peaked. At like number two in the top sellers list, it was like up there above Massive Chalice for a while, which is, is pretty sweet. Yeah. And then it dropped right down, but, but you know. But we it, took screenshots. Yeah, it, it, it happened. We didn't Photoshop them. It's real. So that was awesome. That's good. Yeah. Well, what? I Photoshop them. <laughs> liar. Uh, I mean, it's a lot of it's what we expected to get. It's a fighting game, so we sort of wanted people to get into the technical details of uh, you know what we'd done right and what we'd done wrong and what was missing. Yeah. Um, so that's been pretty cool. People are making lots of good suggestions, you know, make this move faster or add some cancels here. Um, yeah, I don't know, what else? I think, I think that there is a lot of little things as opposed to, you know, put a gigantic rabbit. Oh, sure. You know, there's never, it was never, even if someone has some bit of gigantic rabbit there, would you listen to it? Like, uh, unless it's really obviously missing and you're gonna have to take it and a kind of very measured approach because you, you know you might think it's great and then all the other people that might not like it and yeah. so it, it's it's more about the engagement than anything else I think that's the 
the most rewarding thing that, you know, people seem to like it, we're not crazy, and, or, you know, uh, and, <laughs> and uh, you know, it seems to be getting traction, which is super nice. Uh, so, finish the game in March, end of March, put it out on Steam. Yes, mm -hmm. finish the game. Question mark, question mark, from <laughs> literally. <Yeah. laughs> Un underpants. Yeah. yeah. Um, sleep. Catch up on sleep. Yeah. That, that would be nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be a hard three months, I think. Yeah. But after that, I mean, if it does well on Steam, then port it to consoles and stuff. So that, that's going to be a bunch of technical work. And sleep. Um, maybe some sleep. Um, and then, yeah, who knows after that? I don't know. <laughs> we'll probably be porting for like... I don't know, six months or so, depending mm. on how many consoles we can get it onto. Um, then we'll see. I don't know, Jiro 2. Jiro 58. What's it called? Onikira? What the hell are we calling this game now? <laughs> <laughs> um, probably back to back that, I guess, you know. Yeah. Start that up again. We've got loads of ideas, but no money. So <laughs> find money from somewhere. <laughs> Signatures of all things I am here to read, sea spawn and sea rack, the nearing tide, that rusty boot, snot green, blue silver, rust. Um, I'm working on a uh, project called In Ulysses, uh, which is an um, a adaptation of a short passage from uh, James Joyce's uh, Ulysses. Um, uh, it's been made by myself and a couple of a few other team members. Um, it was it's and it began as a crowdfunded uh, idea on funded.e. We got a few quid to make it, so um, we're currently um, making it on our time off, and uh, it's um, it's uh, we're aiming to have something ready for Bloomsday 2015. Um, it's good. We've got a prototype. Um, we are. It's been separated into into several um, several areas. So we have uh, the first of all. Uh, our first task was to get the the Oculus Rift headset, get our heads around it, decide which engine to use, um, get the headset working in the engine and in a, in a in a prototype. So we've done all that, and now we can put on the headset and see essentially what. Uh, what we um, uh, uh, the mechanic of what we're doing and that's kind of interesting that's fun it feels very new and fresh thing to do um, alongside that we're creating Sandy Men Strand from the turn of the century so uh, which is very different you know there's a lot of reclaimed land there so there was a lot of uh, there's a bit of research had to be done there you know um, uh, one of which, one of which was this 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 book, which is James Joyce's Dublin. Um, so, uh, which is a great kind of like the thing about doing something for James Joyce is that, um, no matter. <laughs> The thing about the VR thing is interesting because nobody's really done it before and that's kind of unusual for Ulysses because there's so many people who become obsessed with the book that they, they devote their lives to it, you know, and they become scholars and um, because it's such a life-changing uh, experience getting through the thing, you know, and once you do do it, you want to talk to people about it, you know, because it's like, you know, it's like you've travelled around the world, you know, it's like you've walked around the world. When you come back, it's not like you're just going to shut up about it. You know, you need to keep. Talk, you need to meet people who've also done it and discuss it. And you want to tell people all the amazing things that you've seen. You know? so it's kind of like that. You know, um, so there's a lot of people uh, done. So you know, you go out and you're like, right now, I have to find out exactly what that beach looked like. Get all the information about what this beach looked like. Um, Sandy Man Strand, which is sorry, the portion of the book that we're doing is Sandy Man Strand. So, um, 
uh, we could go into all the archives and everything like that. Or, surprise, you know, unsurprisingly, there's already somebody who's done it and printed the book about it, you know, and they've done it for the whole book. So, uh, there's a, um, this is, this is, this is the, uh, this section on, on what we're doing. So, they, they, they have a map about exactly what, what it was like. Um, uh, and if we, if you overlay this map on, onto, uh, onto current maps you can see that we're making discoveries about like you know what what's what's sticking out of the ground and this reclaimed land that used to be part of the beach wall and stuff like up here there's a beach wall um, and then this this is a surviving photograph of what the beach wall looked like up to that point but anyway so we're doing all that stuff we've started we, we're building the environment it's a fairly straightforward environment it's just like a big endless beach um, so uh, big on the strand, so we're doing that alongside working on the mechanics. I knew that it might be something that would pique people's interest, you know. Yeah. Uh, so it was good that we got it. You know, it was only the last week or whatever. Then suddenly, um, was funded. Um, we weren't asking for a lot of money. Um, it was fine. It's crowdsourcing, you know, it probably would have been better if we did it on a more international platform yeah. because I thought it would just be an Irish thing but you know the when when the funding finished we got all this press like you know mm. USA Today Forbes like people were really into it you know and got like a huge amount of press I've already been interviewed for like other you know outlets and like I haven't even made the fucking thing it's just an idea <laughs> do you know what I mean it's just an idea yeah. crowdsourcing is interesting that way because that's all you're promising people is an idea and um, if if we did a more international stage, maybe we would have got a lot more. But this is a good amount of money just to do a little bit and see if it works. Okay. Um, to work continuously uh, on it on and off. <laughs> um, just just yeah, just just get it, just get it made, get it done, get the first version done really quickly, and then start iterating and making it better and making it better and making it better. Yeah. And then hopefully we can do three or four iterations of it um, before June and actually make it into something that looks nice. Limit of the diaphane in. Why in diaphane? Uh, my name is Paul Conway. Uh, I run doomcube.com, which is a freelance video game art service. Uh, we primarily, uh, primarily focus on uh, app store games or 2D uh, indie games. Uh, we've been in business, or I've been in business as a software creator for, since 2007. Um, and since then we have produced about 90 games for clients. Um, We've worked with some big name clients such as Square, Square Enix or EA, uh, Chilingo. Uh, one of our sort of flagship projects we work on is the Leps World Series, which is uh, essentially um, Mario Brothers on iPhone, um, <laughs> uh, which has been very successful for the developer Nearby, which has been downloaded, the series has been downloaded over 120 million times. Um, so it's, yeah, it's a successful game. Um, I was working years uh, on my own um, and in the last 18 months I've expanded. Uh, I've taken on uh, three artists throughout the, the 18 months. Uh, two of them are currently working more or less full time with me at the moment. Uh, and our output has increased uh, dramatically. We have, uh, at any time, we have at least six games go on, going on at once. Um, so we're very busy. Uh, um, we're experimenting with new things as well. For uh, We've been working a lot with Tribal City, um, trying to create some of our own original IPs. Um, one of which was uh, Apocalypse Now, which is a, sort of a side-scrolling pixel art shooter, which has proven to be quite uh, popular online, uh, visually. And the game I'm working on is Cellular, which is a, a relaxation uh, abstract game, uh, primarily aimed at um, iPad and iPhone as well. 
and uh, so far everyone we've shown to has been uh, has given us a very positive uh, review of it. 2014 has been probably one of the busiest years uh, since I started. Um, again, you know, we were expanding the team, um, so there was the, the management overhead of uh, taking on new staff and skilling them up, um, as well as I'd learned myself how to manage my own projects and manage their projects. Um, we've had some success this year with another electoral game. We've uh, also started to work with the Romeros in a uh, game, um, a Gullman Taco Truck, which uh, has been announced online so far. Um, and uh, we've also, as I said, we're working with um, Tribal City, uh, so we've been very interested in projects there to try and get um, a lot of our own stamp. Um, since we are uh, leading the, the visual charge uh, on a, in terms of design, uh, rather than having a client interacting and sort of telling us what they want. Um, so it's been a lot of fun. Um, 2015 has uh, already, uh, based on this year, built up to be an even bigger year again. Um, we have at least 10 projects lined up already for the new year. Um, so before even January starts, we're already exhausted. Uh, uh, and yeah, it's it's been very interesting. Um, we're investing a lot as well. Uh, of well, I've been investing a lot of my time in the local community in Galway as well. So trying to... Uh, pass on the skills I have and or knowledge I have uh, from working in the industry for so long to try and see if we can stir a community up here locally. So I've been running game jams and social events, um, which has been proven to be uh, fascinating actually because we uh, kind of are ringing a lot of people out of the woodwork that we weren't, didn't know where around. Um, we, had, we hosted a talk with John and Brenda Romero, which we got about 80 people out on the day for that, which we didn't know there were even that many people interested in games and going. Um, so yeah, 2014 has been a massive year for Doom Cube, uh, and 2015 is certainly going to be as interesting, if not more. What be like one of your highlights of the year? Um, personally, I'd say it was uh, when we had John, Brenda, Romero down doing the talk. Uh, it was a big ten pole event for the local community in Galway. That uh, helped us uh, spur on the community a lot here. Um, Another highlight also was uh, getting the opportunity to work with John and Brenda. Um, normally, uh, my clients wouldn't be as highbrow as, as John and Brenda, or as experienced, um, or as well-known. Um, so that's been a lot of fun. Um, getting a big response to a lot of the artwork we were doing for Apocalypse Now was fantastic. Uh, it really kind of put a lot of, uh, or helped instill a lot of faith in the project uh, from the word go. Um, any artwork we did for it, we were putting out there. We were getting a lot of likes, a lot of positive feedback. Uh, so it made us, it made me feel that we were more than just uh, a house for de developing graphics. We were actually, you know, we had more to give in terms of creating original content as well. I'm running a company called Gambrinus. Uh, it started out as basically just me, but now there are a total of four of us uh, in a variety of places around the world. So there's me and Owen here in Ireland, and then uh, Fred in Sydney and Steve in Amsterdam. So we're, we're kind of remote. Oh, cool. So what's the last year been like for Gambrinus? Well, at the start of this year, there was no Gambrinus. So this has been a formative year. Um, so it's kind of come on out of a game I'm working on called Guild of Engineering. Just started in my free time last year. And this year I gave up my job. I went full time on it. Uh, I was already working with Fred on it. And in the last couple of months then, the, uh, you know, Owen and Steve have joined. So it's kind of starting to build up steam. Um, 
very different year for me. If I look back on the whole of 2014, it's mad. So I went to GDC. I just took holidays from my job. I went to GDC last March. It's the first time I went. It's kind of amazing. Uh, a month later, I gave up my job, um, put the game on Steam Greenlight, got approved in May. Uh, and then I was working full time on it by myself, working, working, working. And um, kind of like when the game is going to be finished, just kept getting further away. Um, so it's kind of working out you know, what I can do and how long it takes and how much game I want to make. Um, then I got into an uh, Enterprise Ireland fund called New Frontiers. It's essentially paid me for six months and all kinds of startup training is involved in that. And that was brilliant. So that's just finished. Uh, and during that, I basically managed to um, get Owen to join. He's helping with programming and Steve to do the soundtrack. So it's kind of all coming together. And now we're kind of doing a deal with a publisher to um, launch the game a lot bigger than we would by ourselves. Um, so that's kind of come together at the moment. What do you expect from 2015? So mostly I want to get our game to the market. I want to, I want to get it out there and get people playing it. And hopefully it'll be amazing. Everyone will love it. Um, and then, I don't know, um, work on something new. And, you know, hire people, actually start paying salaries. That would be cool. <laughs> so my way of building the game is that it's always playable. Um, I've been sharing it online since last October and just prototyping and iterating. Um, so anytime there's anything on, I can just bring it along and show. <clears throat> it's just brilliant for getting feedback and kind of seeing, seeing players' first time interaction with the game, which is really hard to get right when you're you know, so deep into the game yourself. Uh, was this like the first time you've actually tried to make games, or how long have you been I have been making games as a hobby, say, for five or six years, mm -hmm. and just failing horribly to finish things. Uh, the first four years of that, are like two now abandoned projects that were too big. Um, and I was you know, building my own engine, making all the stupid mistakes everyone makes. And then last year, because of one game a month, I started working on smaller projects, things you can finish in one weekend, generally, uh, within a month. And that completely changed how I, how I work. I felt much more confident in actually finishing things. Three of us, there's myself, uh, there and there's the two founders, Brendan Sutton and Kira Murray. And Brendan does design and uh, art, yeah. and Kira on programming and design as well. Uh, so, what's happened last year for Logan Quite a bit. Uh, got started in the NDRC, met a uh, some clowns from Pure Games. Um, uh, we got put onto uh, something known as Gamepad, which was like a, an inaugural or a pilot program for a game specific accelerator as part of the Launchpad uh, uh, program in the NDRC. And that was three months, starting September, finished December. And then we, they gave us office space for a year. So, been here for a year? Yeah, so like, what events are into enough, like, no volume done to, like, games worked on, or events and trades a year? Uh, like, as in Gamescom type of thing, or? Maybe Gamescom, GameCrafts. Like oh, well, then we. Super Mexican stuff. Well, that was, that was GameCraft, and that was March, uh, May, I can't, I can't really remember it, but it was like, First one in D I think it was the first one in DIT. Uh, 
and we won best presentation for Super Mexican standoff. So like just, I think that category was specifically uh, how does it look and how does it sound and how complete is it like. Yeah. That was a 24 hour one. Um, oh yeah, we did pretty well at that. Did okay. And then uh, in August we went to, or yeah, late August we went to GDC Europe and Gamescom. And we actually took Super Mexican Standoff to meet a publisher at um, Gamescom. And did pretty okay with it as well. So, um, so what do you think of Gamescom GDC Europe? Excellent. Uh, GDC Europe, kind of, unless you have more than the uh, the the indie pass, it's, a, it's 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 only okay. But in in terms of uh, if you want to do a bit of business and stuff, like Gamescom is definitely the one to go to uh, on the European side because we met as much people there as you could in GDC in San Francisco or you know even E3 that type of thing. So we did, did pretty well. Got a lot of business and contacts over. Okay. Was that your first time going? Or? Yeah. Okay. yeah. The, uh, the only other, I suppose you could call, big conference that I would have went to before was Develop. Cool. Um, so what games are you working on now or close to releasing or have you released? Uh, that's, that's a bit of a loaded question, actually. <laughs> uh, we're working on a secret game that we can't really talk about at the moment. Uh, for no other reason than the fact that uh, we kind of want to get it to a point where we want it to such a high level to where when we show it, we can say, we're, we're actually proud to say that we, we worked on that and it's, we're working in secret on it. But like we have Mexican standoff there to release. Uh, that's pretty much done. Needs a bit, little bit tidying up. Uh, I'm making a Christmas thing, just I started it, I wanted to begin it in at the start of December and have it out by Christmas. So that's almost done, I'd say that'll be finished the weekend. Uh, and then the, the secret game we can't really talk about, we'll probably be talking about it in January. Um, yeah, so what do you expect from 2015? Uh, well, expect and hope are, are two different things. That, like. I hope that we have a publisher, I hope we get CSF, um, but expectation wise, you know, I'm expect, I expect to have a game released uh, by late next year, uh, that, hopefully that secret game that we're working on. Um, yeah, that's pr pretty much all I expect from next year, <laughs> you know, we're kind of doing the groundwork at the moment and then hoping to get it out, so, you know. We're the co-founders of Pewter Game Studios. So how many of you have Pewter Games? There are now six of us. Well, seven? <laughs> so, yeah, seven. we have a temporary <laughs> seventh who will be gone next month. Um, He's not doing too well. <laughs> <laughs> when does this come out? <laughs> Just the day before we Okay, great. We'll let you know. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, six of us, four is, four is full-time, two part-time. So, what's the history of Peter Games? Oh, don't look at me. Okay, I'll do the history. <laughs> uh, so, it was myself and Ben founded the company um, last September when we started uh, on NDRC's Gamepad program. Um, we were on that program with, with Low Poly, um, Dark Oasis, Sock Monster, and Social Arcade. So, there was five games companies. Um, so that's when we formally kind of uh, incorporated the company. Before that, we'd just been kind of getting together, making some small games, um, just kind of figuring things out. But once we got onto the program, we incorporated and started things properly. And what we, the first thing we did was 
we took um, our, our, mas our major project from our masters, um, which was the Little Acre, and we started doing that properly, which basically meant scrapping everything and starting it all over again, <laughs> making it good. And we didn't regret it. <laughs> Still don't. <laughs> so what's the last year been like to use? Man, it's crazy, I guess. What was, what, how did it start? I don't know. Was there Game Jam early on in the year? The Microsoft one? There's a couple of Game Jams. We won the Microsoft Game Jam, and then we released a mobile game on the Windows phone, and that won some things. But that was kind of just to finish something and get something out there and see what it was like to ship it and all that. I think that was at the start of this year. But... Um, and then we went to San Francisco, GDC, met with lots of people, had a demo of our game there, the Little Laker, to show off to people. And What can we say? Yeah, yeah I mean, that's, I think that's the first major thing that happened in this year was yeah. GDC because we worked hard to get like a, just a little build of the game over there and we showed it to you know, Microsoft, Nintendo, Sony, a few publishers. Um, and then out of that, we got onto the, you know, the ver various developer programs and got developer kits and stuff like that. So that was, that was really good. Looking back, just recently, we checked the build that got us onto that. And it's so horrible. It's hard to <laughs> imagine why that worked. Like, <laughs> like, it it kind of makes me hope that they'll really yeah. like the next thing. <laughs> yeah. Because so it was woeful. When you're looking at that, it's good to see the progress that we've made since then. But at the same time, we basically redid another three months of work which was already itself redoing college work. So, uh, yeah, the game has gone through a lot of iterations. Um, it, it looks good now, though. It looks really good. Um, but, yeah, so I'd say the next thing after GDC was Greenlight. We put the game up on Steam Greenlight. Um, and that got Greenlight then. So that was really good. Yeah, it was like 10,000 yeses in a 30 days or 35 days, something like that. Something like that, yeah. So that was good. Um, what happened next? I think it was June. June? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. So, oh yeah. So that happened in June, and then it was after June we went to Enterprise Ireland, uh, and we pitched for the Competitive Star Fund, which would give us the funding that we needed to actually continue making it. Uh, and we were really lucky to get that because apparently there was a lot of applicants for it. Um, and I don't know. It, it seems harder lately for games companies to get something like that. Um, so we really had to kind of um, say that we were identifying some sort of you know, a gap in the market and it wasn't just based on the merit of the game by itself it was more about what we would do after that and stuff like that you know? I was most um, surprised we got it because Chris went to the toilet just before we went in and then they came out and we were just like oh we're ready for you now and I was just like <laughs> sorry he's pissing <laughs> we'll nature calls what could I do so I'm just sitting outside the room just being like Chris it all worked felt out like a end. year waiting on him to finish <laughs> like 30 seconds yeah fine. But we got it in the end, so that was good. When was that? I get, like, we're kind of in a weird place, because in the last few months we've just been, like, in a little bubble. Head down. Head down, working, it. working, working. Like, because we haven't been doing too much. Like, we, well, you used, used entered a game jam. I wasn't at that one. And then yeah. we entered another game jam, and Chris wasn't at that one. So we're kind of, like, we've just been really boring in the last few months because <laughs> we've been making the game. Yeah. But I guess that's fair enough. Like, <laughs> well, but we have kind of been in a cave, like... We'll be coming up for air soon, um, yeah. so when we start showing people the game as it is now. What do you expect in 2015? To release a game. Yes, we do expect that. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't know. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna um, hopefully release the game around April or May. We'll see. Um, at the moment, the, our current budget kind of only allows us to develop up until that point. So we'll see how far the game is along, and if it needs much more work, we might um, either. You know, kind of just work on it part time until it's finished. Maybe look for more funding, um, but we're going to do our best to to kind of finish it by then, um, and then it'll be released on Steam. It'll be released on. We can say now it's going to be released on Xbox One. Um, we only just signed the title license agreement like this week, so that's cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, and then hopefully a couple of other the a couple of the other console platforms, but um, they haven't been 100% officially confirmed. Um, but we'll do our best. Yeah, yeah. Definitely Xbox One. Yeah.
Um, I'm JP Vaughan, so I'm from Rocket Rainbow, and Rocket Rainbow was founded in 2012 after uh, PopCap Games Dublin studio was closed. Um, the three of us that started uh, Rocket Rainbow, Jay, myself, Christian and Shu, were kind of creatively frustrated after we finished up in PopCap and we felt that we could make um, some great games and so it started. Um, the first game that we worked on and released was picked up for publishing by Team17 and it's called Hey You. It started its life as a uh, pop, uh, game jam project in PopCap. Uh, they used to run game jams referred to as PopCamp and so uh, myself and Christian were on the original team there and we really loved the concept and when we started Rocket Rainbow we felt we could bring it to market and um, the rest has been a kind of up and down journey since then. So um, it was released earlier this year in October um, and uh, we added some cool features to it like a level editor to allow people to create their own levels and share them with friends. But uh, it's based on a sheep named Matilda, and you have to help her to collect lambs who have been scattered across the globe by uh, solving puzzles across uh, various landscapes, such as the farmyard or the polar ice caps um, and whatnot. So, so how has 2014 been for you? Um, 2014 has been uh, surprising. Uh, we started 2014 talking to publishers for the game. And we ended uh, 2014 releasing on the App Store as a premium priced game. Um, and so we've, we've learned an awful lot about sort of just running a company. So when we were in PopCap, we did development. So we knew how to make games, but what we didn't know is how to sell games. Um, and that's been a kind of huge learning experience for us. Uh, it's also the year that we kind of received funding. So we've ha we had to do a lot of learning uh, about getting investment if you're a games company and um, managing <laughs> finances with no income which has been tricky so there's been a lot of challenges but I mean there's, there's a huge reward in kind of I guess working for yourself and um, yeah we're I guess we're happy with the outcome like we've learned an awful lot and we kind of want to move forward uh, so Rocket Rainbow it's uh, based in Galway here in Salt Hill but um, each of the team members works remotely because we're a small company. So um, two of the co-founders are located in Dublin, one in the centre of Dublin, the other has actually just moved outside of Dublin now, so he's, he's working from Navin. Um, and for Hey You, we had to bring on board some extra team members and they were located in, in like different locations. So at any one time during production, there was people working in Galway, in Dublin, in London, and uh, even in the Netherlands. Oh yeah, what did hope for? So a big hope for us is if we can keep going as a company. The first two years are like the hardest thing as any startup. Um, so we're working on our product roadmap at the moment with Team17 and we're hoping to bring the game to as many platforms as possible and hopefully uh, create new fans for the game. Um, and we also want to push on and start working on our next games because uh, we're chomping at the bit to kind of get all the ideas that we have in our head or on paper into prototypes to play and then move forward with them. So that will be something that we're looking to do. Um, and I guess establish ourselves a little better, um, you know, take what we've learned and sort of move forward if we can. My name, um, I guess, CEO of Tribal City. Um, General Dog's Body is probably more appropriate description of my job, though. Um, so Tribal City is a, a small indie developer, um, which means that you know, essentially, pretty much everybody mucks in with everything that has to be done, um, and any of the jobs that aren't covered, well, that book stops here. So that's all on my desk. Um, we've been around since 2011, 
Um, we've had some decent success in markets. So this past year, um, most of our time has been spent managing our, our games that are in market. Um, we're partnered with a company in the US called um, Atomic Bullfrog. And so our most popular titles are actually uh, in conjunction with them. Um, we've had some new stuff too. So as Paul has mentioned, um, some interesting titles we're working on with him, uh, Apocalypse and, and Cellular. Uh, and there's a lot of interesting stuff coming up for 2015. Well, it's starting really well. Um, so we were talking about a little while ago, we have a big project starting in January. Uh, we're hiring for that project. Um, we can't say a whole lot about it just yet, but um, we'll let you know early in January, hopefully. Um, so that's a great start. Our existing stuff, obviously, we still have to keep on top of. Um, and as Paul alluded to, Apocalypse has gotten a great reception. Um, so we'd be hoping to get it and Cellular both out the door uh, pretty early in, in 2015. So, so right now it's shaping up to be quite a bit better, I would say, than, than 2014. Uh, so it's exciting times. I'd love to see an Irish company, obviously I'd love if it was us, um, but I'd love to see an Irish company have a runaway success. Because um, that would cement things incredibly for the industry. If you look at um, other countries where you have a vibrant community, um, where you have a lot of companies that are commercially successful, usually there's one breakout. And then from that, things start to fall in place. People get a bit of belief from it. Um, so right now I think that's, we're waiting for that breakout. Um, and so hopefully 2015 will give it to us. And hopefully it'll be tribal, but you know. <laughs>